Hello, my name is Allie and welcome to my channel. We are back with Caller X Malice Sasazuka's route. Now, as of right now, it is raining, right? So um, if you hear either the rain or the thunder, just ignore it. It's just a little bit of background noise, but that's okay. Urged by Minigushi, I went to the hallway. Thank you very much for your time. I am Takuru Sasazuka of the Cyber Crimes Division. Minigushi has told me about you. Sasazuka was talking with the police chief. What's going on? I just like beating around the bush. If you have something to say, make it quick. I don't have much time to spare for you. God, he's such an ass. Then I'll be happy to oblige your request. I've come back here in order to reinstate the Swords and Firearms Control Law. I will see it put back on the books. Ugh. I know full well that is not an easy task to solve. But... When I'm the one that cracks the X-Day incidents, I would like for you to take a hard look at bringing back the swords and firearms control law. After he said that, Sasazuka bowed. Please. Sasazuka. That's the first time I'd seen him bow to anyone. Reinstating the law was Sasazuka's primary goal. Now that I understood Sasazuka's past trauma, I knew how important that was to him. I watched quietly as Police Chief Takeda opened his mouth to speak. Solving the case on your own hand, huh? You talk big. I am confident I can. Assuming that you do basically solve the incidents on your own. You must also understand that I am unable to decide the fate of the swords and firearms control law on my own. Of course. Why do I keep using- This is the second time that I've accidentally used my regular voice. For Sasazukas. I don't know why. I'm just derping right now. Ha 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 I see. You do understand. So you're telling me to pull my strings in order to move people who can affect that change. I leave it to you to interpret my words however you see fit. After saying that, Sasazuka smiles. I dislike people who are all talk. I'll pretend I didn't hear what you said here today. I don't mind. I hope to get a response from you the next time I see you. Heh. <laughs> we'll see. I just, I hate him. I hate him. He's an ass. I hate him. <laughs> With that being said, the police chief walked away. This was one of the conditions for Sasazuka to return to the line of duty. Huh? You don't remember? He whispered into my ear that day. God, his smile's creepy. Ugh. Flashback. And one more thing. Where did you get that information? You hold me in high regard, so you should already know what the source is. <laughs> Those are my conditions. If you accept all of that, then I don't mind returning to the line of duty. Oh, speaking of which... Back then, he'd extracted information from the Metropolitan Office's network that the police chief was coming to Shinjuku. And on top of that, he wanted to make a personal appear appeal to the chief of police himself. Huh? I was about to yell when my mouth was covered up from behind. Don't shout, stupid. I nodded and he let go. Did it go well? Beats me. But from that little briefing, it's pretty apparent that old man is only ever thinking about preserving his position. If I really do solve the incidents, he might help me. I hope so. I'm relieved to have fulfilled my promise to you. I'm sorry, but I'll excuse myself now. I wish you two the best of luck. Minigishi quickly follows after the chief. Sasazuka, you never fail to surprise me. Don't sulk. But let's just continue the investigation. You want to reinstate the law too, don't you? I do, but let's get some coffee. I'll make sure to grab a lot of extra sugar and milk. I said that and trudged along, and Sasazuka nodded, obviously pretty pleased with himself as he returned to HQ. December 17th, 8.39 p.m. Nobody's here. Yeah, I had them go away. I got a hiccup. <laughs> there it is. 
Sasuzuka turned the li- on the lights, and I picked up the remote for the climate controls in order to warm up the room. It'll take time to get everything ready, so just relax. Yes. I honestly had no idea what's about to happen, or what to expect. Sasuzuka turned on his PC and started clicking away on his keyboard. He seemed to be concentrating, so I quietly sat down on the sofa and tried my best to stay out of his way. Oh, I better contact Kazuki. I reached into my pocket to grab my phone and began to write a message. I might be late tonight. Do you have some decent food to eat? After a while, a reply comes. I'll be fine. Okay. Thank you, Kazuki, for me. I don't want to. Uh, are they alright? I was obviously worried about how the two of them were doing, since they don't get along. But then I laughed at the next message. We're doing fine here. Oh. <laughs> Is this from Okazuki? Ignore the last message. It seems like they're doing fine, so don't worry about them. Okay, bundle up and don't catch a cold. I sent that message and put my phone away. All right, that should do. Are you done? Yeah, just need to wait until 10 now. Um, what are we doing? I'd like to know soon. To put it simply, we're going to video chat. I showed you the message from Akito, right? Three days ago, I got another message. Sasuzuka clicked through his cell phone and then showed me the screen. Akito underscore S underscore scomp. Comp. Scomp. <laughs> wow. What is this? It's a user account for a video chat site. I searched for it and it came out. I've already created a user account with my information. Meaning, we'll be able to speak with the Keto directly at 10 o'clock. Uh, um, video chat? So like, a TV phone? You really are from the Stone Age. I've never used it before. Jeez, in short. You can talk to someone in real time when you connect a camera and mic to your PC. I see. It seems like it's a great thing that we'll be able to confirm whether or not Akito is safe. Don't be so carefree. I've already told you why Akito was trying to make contact with me. That's true, but... Akito had gotten and repaid his revenge, but he's still being kept under because he was connected with Sasazuka. Or kept around under. Why did I say under? In other words, Akito's mission tonight was to recruit Sasazuka. Don't look at me like that. Sasazuka. It's almost time. You stand behind me. We don't know if Akito knows about your caller. You don't speak unless it's absolutely necessary. All right. December 17th, 9.58 p.m. Sasazuka sat in front of his PC and put on his headset and mic. I stood behind him while watching the screen anxiously. And then... 10 p.m. The moment the clock hit 10, a familiar face popped up on the monitor. Oh. Hello there. Akito. Oh, I don't like the way it's doing that. No. (laughs) Nice to see you again, Sasazuka. And Kazuki's sister. Akito. Hey, you seem to be doing well. For now. Sorry to rush things, but were you responsible for the Metropolitan Office bombing on the 15th? Uh, All of a sudden? Personally, I was angry for Akito, but he just smiled wryly. But you already know the answer. You're quite the sly one. Yes, I did it. I'm not as good as you, but I do have some hacking skills too. Oh? The bomb was planted before him, and I used the elevator and security systems to guide them up to the top floor. You know the rest. I did everything. He says it so bluntly. Akito was displaying no emotion at all on the monitor. I could not believe what I was seeing. So, are you satisfied now? Beats me. I honestly don't know. They're dead, but... It's not like doing this is going to bring my sister back. This may all just be for self-satisfaction. No. 
It most likely is out of self-satisfaction. My sister didn't tell anyone about the bullying, but she did try to talk to me. But I was too preoccupied with my hobby that I never bothered to hear her out. It was my fault that she died. It's easy to say that it isn't true, but if I'm sitting in his shoes, I don't think I'd be able to blame him. Sasazuka, if you investigated me, you know that the lawsuit my family filed was dismissed. Yeah, your only witness didn't show. We didn't even need a witness to win the case against the school. What do you mean? My sister left a S note. She wrote down the names of all the people who bullied her. If we submitted that as evidence, we could have won the lawsuit. But I wanted to get revenge on those people with my own hands, no matter how many years it took. That was the only thing left I could do for my sister. That's what I thought. Akito's expression was quiet. He seemed like a different person than the person I knew, the one who would hang out with Kuzuki. Let's get down to business. The reason that I'm contacting you tonight is because I've been ordered to by the powers that be in Adonis. That is a weird way of putting that. I could tell that hearing that made Tasazuka tense up light slightly. We've researched your pass. I can understand why Zero wanted me to recruit you. What is this Zero? Zero is the leader of Adonis. We owe everything to him. You owe everything to someone that pushed you to take revenge? You can make your own judgment call after hearing this. Thomas Ken Nagata. Do you recognize that name? <laughs> that name? Could it be? Yes, Sasazuka. That's the name of the shooter that killed your mother. What about it? He's currently in Japan. Huh? On the monitor that was displaying Akito, the image of a tall man appeared. The picture was in black and white and looked like it was security camera footage. Sasazuka was focused intently on the picture, and from the way he reacted, that must actually be the person who murdered his mother. His face is creepy. Under the orders of the syndicate he belonged to, he came to Japan earlier this year. We've already researched his whereabouts, contact information, and his known associates. If you would like, Adonis will assist you in exacting your revenge. That is the message from Zero. <laughs> Sasazuka. His shoulders twitched. Seeing the killer that he hated so much, the man he actually wanted to kill, what was Sasazuka thinking right now? The silence was deafening to me. Nagata is part of the criminal underworld. Even you won't be able to pursue him all by yourself. And you're saying Adonis can? Set a thief to catch a thief, they say. I don't know the exact details, though. But, Sasazuka, society has already judged him for his crimes, and they found him innocent. This is exactly the reason I joined Adonis. I don't regret that one bit. Sasazuka doesn't say anything. He just stared at Akito through the monitor. Or perhaps he was actually just staring at the killer on the screen. If you intend to join Adonis, send me a message within three days. You can come with Big Sister over there, or by yourself. <laughs> she has nothing to do with this. Sasazuka! You shut up! Sasazuka's voice was cold, and I missed my window to reach out to him. We were so close, and yet, I felt like he was in his own pocket of space. As soon as you contact us, we'll send someone. Don't bother setting them up. Only the lowest level henchmen will be sent. Stop. If it was possible, I wanted to shut off the PC. I didn't want him to hear Akito's words anymore. I didn't want Sasasuka to waver. I made fists with both hands, clenched my teeth, and waited. Akito turned to me. Oh, right. Big sister. Can you do me a favor and tell Kazuki to stop messaging me? I hesitated for a moment. But when Sasazuka didn't react, I quietly opened my mouth to speak. I can't do that. Kazuki is still waiting for your reply, Akito. You are reading them, aren't you? I may be reading them, but I can't respond. He still says he believes in me. I'm already a criminal. Akito. And I've already sent a parting gift to Kazuki. He might not realize it, 
but it was atonement for myself. Akito turned his attention away from me and looked at Sasazuka again. Sasazuka, this is a personal request to you. Please make no mistake about who it is that must be judged. And with that, Akito disappeared from the monitor. December 15th update has been added to materials. Mrs. Sasazuka's killer has been added to materials. Sasazuka didn't move from his desk. He didn't even turn around to look at me as he sat in silence. I didn't know what I should say to Sasazuka right now. As the silence continued, the ticking of the wall clock seemed to grow louder than I remembered. Lady? Yes? Sasazuka slowly rose to his feet and turned to face me. Go home for today. Huh? But... I need to do some thinking alone. Please. Think about what? He never said please to me before. Every other time he thought he needed space, he'd just bluntly tell me to get out or something similar. His words were meant to be kind, but it felt like he was pushing me away. That made me afraid. Am I just in the way? Just go home. Your brother's worried about you. Sasazuka. He grabbed my coat off the sofa, on the sofa, and handed it to me, and urged me to go without saying another word. Please tell me you won't go anywhere. Oh, my nose is itchy. Eh. I couldn't bring myself to say that right now. December 18th, 9.26 a.m. The following day, I headed to the investigations HQ and looked through the X-Day incident files all morning. No new information useful to the investigation. I stared at the picture of Akito being posted as a suspect. Among his list of friends was Kazuki's name. I brushed my finger against it. Flashback. During breakfast, Kazuki seemed to act like his usual self. Akazuki complimented me on the breakfast I made, and Kazuki frowned at him, telling him not to hit on his sister in front of him. <laughs> Yoshinari had three plates, and Kazuki told him to show some restraint. <laughs> They're like siblings, but... He was acting calm, but when I saw him look down every so often to futilely check his phone, it just made me feel so sad. I left home because I couldn't bear to see my brother like that any longer. That has to be heartbreaking. It seemed like Sasazuka hadn't made it to work yet. Oh, Minigishi. Good morning. Good morning, Hoshino. Did something happen with Sasazuka? We are about to begin the day's briefing. Sasazuka has been doing an independent investigation since last night. I can't say what happened last night. Minigishi frowned a little while he looked at me suspiciously. Freelancing at this juncture? I'm sorry. There's no need for you to apologize. The investigation is currently at a standstill. If he's found some clues, then that could allow me more room to operate. Ninigishi shows me a tired smile. He wasn't the type to ever complain to one of his subordinates. The stress wrinkles visible on his face made me stand up. You seem a bit tired. So how about I make you some coffee? Well, thank you. The deadline that Adonis had declared for X Day was only two weeks away. The only person who seemed to still have energy was Police Chief Takeda, who was yelling up a storm. Yeah, and he doesn't do diddly squat, just yell at people. The investigators on site, including Minigishi, were all visibly tired. <laughs> I hate people who are like that, that like, you have to do everything, and then they act like, and then they don't do shit. After I delivered coffee to Minigishi, I went out to the hallway for a break and dashed off a message to Sasazuka. Where are you right now? If you can read this message right now, please respond. <laughs> I looked towards the ground while holding my phone in my line of sight. Flashback. If you would like, Adonis will assist you in exacting your revenge. This is the message from Zero. The number you have dialed is unavailable right now. At the tone. He's not answering. The seed of worry grew larger, and its vines started to constrict around my heart. 
he had a motive for revenge. He had a target for revenge. And now he had the means for revenge. With the same stage set for him, Akito joined Adonis. What would Sasazuka do? He said that there was someone he hated so much that he wanted to kill them. Oh, my heart. I am going to let you guys go here. I hope you are enjoying, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!